Yes, so welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. What's eating my brassicas? My cabbages, broccoli, cauliflowers have all been eaten, literally overnight. Have a look at this. I haven't put any snail bait down, and I'm not going to see any snails here, and I don't reckon it's birds. I reckon there are little, little creatures in the soil, you know, like earwigs and things like that, that you know, decomposers, you know, the composting makers that are coming up and eating the leaves. It's not just, you know, just the outside, there are holes in the middle as well. And honestly, if there were snails, they'd be hiding somewhere nearby. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere at all. So we're gonna have to cover these. There's a few things you can do to cover them, and I'm gonna show you them now. Now, we need to put a plant sleeve around them. You can get tree guards, plastic tree guards, which are like a core floop uh, in it. What are they doing? Oh, bugger me. Seriously, you wonder why you know I've got no garden stakes left or anything like that. These dogs, do you reckon they need some bones in their diet? <laughs> you reckon they don't get bones? <laughs> they get enough bones, they just can't get enough of anything. Busted, eh, Caro? Guilty face. <laughs> anyway, uh, tree guards. We've got these little wax cardboard ones you can use that fold out into a nice rectangle like this. Put that over the top, comes with a couple of bamboo um, stakes. You can get these at all good garden centers. We've got some on our website. Or drink bottles like that. Take the cap off. I just tore the bottom off. I didn't have my knife with me now. But just cut the bottom off and that becomes a little hot house sleeve over the top like a cloche. Or you can actually buy cloche uh, units as well, which are a lot, lot, a lot larger. And another one, you know, where is it? The old black grit container. If you're not going to refill it or you've got plenty of these in the garage, cut the bottom off that and then turn it upside down and use that as a cloche over the top so it protects them. It's a deterrent, it's not 100% but you can also put some snail bait just in case the snails are getting into it anyway. So let's start with this one. Now with this you have to bury it in a little bit because the wind will get to it. So a bit of a twist like that, there we are. Now that's protected inside there. That's probably the cheapest way to do it, but these are you know, a few bucks and you get a pack of 10 or something like that. But if you've got lots of drink bottles or water bottles that are you know, one and a half litre or two litre bottles, the half litre ones are a little bit narrow for this. But the, nevertheless, if your seedlings are small, you can still use them. And that's pretty much all you've got to do to protect them. Feed this through. It's got a couple of little slots there like that. One on either side crack it open you can see that just have real nifty now I've used these plenty of times in the past and because it's got the wax coating on it it will last through watering cycles it'll last through you know rainfall a good season a good six months I've had these in some garden beds uh, when I was doing the tomatoes the big malakas I had these around the base of them and they did extremely well and then just push that in like that doesn't get direct sunlight but that's okay we only need to protect it for at least a couple of weeks or if you want to I'm just thinking out aloud without making any sounds secateurs scissors that's what we need I haven't got any scissors here folks and the closest pair would be about 150 meters away and I'm not going to go for a walk now so I'm just going to try and see if I can tear this in half using the edge of the table there we are because we don't need the height the full height of it meaning you know the full length too much shade casted in there so I've cut them in half and we're going to give it a go now like this so make sure we don't catch the leaves in there there we are a bit of protection just that extra protection is all we need to do here and that's exactly what I'm going to do here because otherwise they're all going to get eaten away. Now these dogs, oh come on, that's been eaten. I'll show you one that's been almost destroyed. Puppies, hey, move, come on. Huh, can you see it? No, you can't see it, look at that, it's gone. It's just been eaten back to the ground. The roots are still strong there. Oh, this will bounce right back up, but we've got to give it some protection. Now the cloche or the little plastic container or even the plant sleeve does a couple of things. It protects the plant 
from the cold weather, not that they suffer too much from the cold, but it gives it that extra little bit of heat, so it actually grows quicker. And at the same time, it deters any pests that come along, especially birds. But in this case here, I don't think it's birds. I think there's something in the soil. They're probably going to crawl up. And, you know, part of it to me is I'm thinking that even if I put the cloche on the outside, it may come up through the middle. But maybe again, it may not. It may travel in from under the mole somewhere else and just comes in and goes back out again and hides for another day. So this way, you protect your plants and give them a chance to grow. See that one there? Hasn't been touched yet because it's in the middle and, and that one there, barely. So that's the size it should have been by now. But they're getting attacked a little bit. But we'll fix that. I don't think it's snails that's doing this, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put some snail bait down anyway. Just a little bit on the inside here, eh, maybe a little bit on the outside. Now folks, if you're going to use a snail bait, use something friendly, eco-friendly. This is Eradicate Eco. I haven't got the box of it, but this is a two and a half kilo box. Uh, it's just an iron base and it should be safe for, well, it's been trialled and tested for safer animals and pets, but look, practice caution, even if it says it's safe for animals and pets, it's always better to make sure your animals aren't around there when you're applying it down and do cover it over with a little bit of mulch if you're really concerned. So better to be safe than sorry, but if you're going to use one, use one that is certified and, and it's been trial and tested to be safe and friendly for wildlife and animals. So we're putting some of this down. And another thing on broccolis and Brassicaceae family, basically your broccolis, kales, cauliflowers, cabbages, they all require a similar environment. They love the heat or the sun, direct sun. I won't say heat, the sun. They need a soil that's going to be slightly alkaline. So six to seven, seven and a half. And the best way to do that is with our black grit. You'll get that balance of uh, uh, NPK in it or the pH level to be neutral. But more importantly is the water. They need lots of water so they can start forming their heads properly. If your soil's too acidic, it'll probably form a head very small and sort of bolt. And that's what we call bolting. So make sure it isn't and add your black grit to ensure that it is actually neutral to slightly alkaline. But the watering again, per week in a square meter, or let's say this bed here, which is half a meter wide up to here, would require anywhere from 200 litres of water and upwards per week. But that depends on the type of soil you have. So make sure you check your soil, and you know we've been doing our tests to see the moisture level in our soil and if it's dry underneath. That's because I haven't been watering, but whilst, once you start watering, that moisture will start to seep down. It won't dehydrate as quickly, and you need to make sure they're wet, but not soggy. So you don't want it to be waterlogged, but you want it to be damp and moist. So the organic matter, our planting mix, our compost is the way to do it with the cocoa and straw on top, but watering from 200 to 400 litres of water a week. That's not per plant, it's in a couple of square metres that we're talking about. So in a square metre, 200 litres of water is equivalent to about 20 watering cans per week. So that's two watering cans a day on average and a bit. That's not a lot of water. Remember when we did a 10 litre watering cycle in one square metre bed, it went nowhere. It barely just cracked the surface in the moisture. So when you hydrate it, two litres of water per day if needed because you've got to do the finger test. Stick your finger in a soil and make sure it's moist. Broccolis are full of magnesium, iron, zinc and things like that. So as an additional plant or a benefit or health benefit, they're a great plant to have and, and consume. So very popular. They date back a couple of thousand years, by the way, created out there in the uh, Roman era and they then populated through the rest of the uh, European regions and obviously made its way down to Australia and now they're grown everywhere across the world. You've got Romanesco, you've got Calabrese, you've got uh, uh, Sprouting, Green Dragon, you've got lots of different broccolis and they're all fantastic to have in your garden. So that's the broccoli for you. Make sure you keep the water up to them and this is what Vader wants. Lots of tickles and that's what I'm going to do. Keep it up to him with the tickles and he'll be happy as Larry. Check out our website VasiliesGarden.com for everything you need every day. We've got some great specials running too and it is the winter and stay tuned because we're, we're going to be announcing the winner of the $1,000 hamper. You've got to be in it to win it so just shop online or your local garden centre to be in the draw. From me Vasily, Marisi. Thank you.